Okay, we're going to work on our linear perspective. We're going to use a straight edge, and we're going to really focus on getting our verticals, straight up and down, and horizontals, left to right, accurate. So this thing here is called a T-square, and a T-square is used to get straight lines and straight vertical and horizontal lines. So what you do is you take the paper and you put it up against the edge of this black part here. Okay, I'm going to press down on the side, hold it in place, and that gives me a perfect right angle. So I want you to learn how to do this without that T-square, just using a ruler. So a lot of things that artists do use art supply tools, and I don't want you to ever be limited by your art supplies or in the lack thereof. So we're going to use this to practice our verticals and horizontals. Okay, so just to make sure everybody understands how to use that ruler at the end, right here, the edge of the paper, and this right here, this, just so you know, non-negotiable. You got to do it this way. You're going to line those up. Make sure that those are lined up. I'm going to have you make three vertical and three horizontal lines on your paper. And I want you to use it this way. Use this technique. So the wider rulers work better for this. Okay, three vertical. Now, that one is wobbly. So that one, that's not going to count. I'm going to erase that one. Now, your team at your table is going to approve or disapprove of your lines. So you're going to show your neighbor at your table that you are you understand the concept, you understand how to put this at the edge of your paper. So the paper, it's from a manufacturer. So that means that a machine popped those out and they are all going to be exactly the same. So they have 90 degree angles, they're going to be perfect. So that's why you are using the edge of your paper. So go ahead and make three vertical and three horizontal lines on your paper. When you're finished, you're going to get the approval of everyone at your table. Now, if you do not see, if somebody at your table passes their paper and they don't have horizontal and vertical lines, let's say they look something like, oh, that or that, or that, that's not vertical, that's not horizontal, those are diagonal, and I need for you to make sure that you have them vertical and horizontal. All right, so once you get your three vertical, three horizontal, in the upper left-hand corner, and it's important that your name is in the upper left-hand corner, write artist, and your first and last name, and our first and last name and hour. Then you're going to pass it to your neighbor and your neighbor's going to say, good. And they're going to write their name, Billy, Bo Billy Bob Joe. Okay. Now, if somebody passes you their paper and says, I need you to sign that, but it looks like that, say, hmm, no. Let me show you how to do that. Show them how to do it. Then watch them do it until you know that they have that. Why do you ask? Why do you care if your neighbor gets it? Because you already understand it. And if I have to stop and explain what I just explained, then when you have questions that you need answered, that I haven't answered in the lesson, I'm not going to be available because I'm still going over that. Okay, three vertical, three horizontal, your first and last name and hour in the upper left hand corner. Okay, we're going to do a practice landscape. So the first thing I want you to do is make a big cross from corner to corner. And when you do that, you want to look at the direction that you're going, not at the tip of your pencil. So it would be the same thing as if you were like riding a bicycle and you're always looking at your front wheel. Very, very soon, you would be part of uh, somebody's YouTube video and providing us all with some good laughs because you're not going to know where you're going and you're going to drop. But it'll be funny for us. Okay, so then you're going to make the X. You can do that freehand because these don't really go all the way across anyway. And it's not crucial that these are perfect. Let's see, but look at that. It annoys me. I have to, like, try to fix that. Okay, make a cross. 
Then with your ruler, you're going to make a horizontal line. Put your, your pencil on this cross point right here. Then line up the tip. Yes, the tip of your ruler. Tip of your ruler. Do you have to use the tip of your ruler, Miss Little Finger? Yes, you have to use the tip of your ruler. Pencil here. Line up with the tip of your ruler. So this is your vanishing point here. Vanishing point here. Here. Yeah, it's still not good. And then this is your horizon line. So everything above this is sky. Okay, so go ahead and do that point. Go ahead and do your X across the page. Then use your ruler. Use it to get that 90 degree angle with the edge of your ruler lined up with the edge of your paper. Go ahead and do that now. Da, 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 da. Okay, then your next step is you're going to use your ruler to make some guidelines on the left hand side. We're gonna put some trees on the left. So take your ruler and line it up. Let's start here so I can see easily. Line it up with the edge of the paper. And this one, because it's on the very edge, I can line it up on the, the side as well as the bottom. And I'm gonna make some very, very light guidelines. Now make these light because you are going to erase those out, or at least you wanna be able to see around them. As you get further, closer to the vanishing point, make those lines a little closer to each other. Make sure you line them up. So we're gonna, we're gonna use some creativity with this project, but there are some certain things that I absolutely positively will insist on. So for us to create the illusion of depth with linear perspective, vertical placement, overlapping, and diminishing sizes, this must be vertical. Make your guidelines. We'll pause. Then you're gonna make your trees. So here's what you have to absolutely do. Now these trees, they can be all kinds of different trees. We can take all kinds of liberties with these trees, but they have to be vertical. So you're gonna, you should already have, before you move on, you should have your vertical lines. Then you're gonna start with your trunk at this line. So all the trunks are gonna be right here at the bottom. Then all the tops of the trees are gonna be up here. Da -da 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 -da. So I'm gonna draw my trunk. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Put in a little line there for a branch. Maybe another branch there. And distinguishing characteristic of trees, they taper, they get smaller as they go up. And I'm not gonna make this like a really fancy thing. I'm just gonna make some real general kind of tree impression lines here, some foliage, foliage some leaves, lovely leaves. Okay, then my next one. And you can use whatever types of trees you want. Down. Good thing we have these things called erasers. So notice that they are vertical. The trunks are vertical. Make sure those trunks are vertical. Where that the leaves start is up to you. Totally your choice. Another distinguishing characteristic. So this. The trees are gonna get smaller. They're gonna get shorter, but they should also get a little bit more narrow as we go further in the background here. Those should actually be more narrow. So when we get to the creative part of this, which don't do now. We're not gonna be drawing any extra stuff right now. Right now we don't wanna get the concept down. You can make, I want each one of these to be unique. I don't want any, any one of these to look exactly the same. So you can make all kinds of things in these trees. You could have birds in the trees. You could have animals hiding behind the trees, dinosaurs with their heads sticking out. Maybe the bodies are on the other side. So go ahead and draw your trees. Make sure that the bottoms are at the very at this baseline here and the tops are there. Okay. 
Next step is your sidewalks. So decide how wide you want the sidewalk to be. And I'm going to make mine an inch and a quarter, roughly. And I'm going to go ahead and measure that on both sides so I have that symmetrical. Then I'm going to line up with my vanishing point. I'm going to put my pencil on my vanishing point. Use my ruler. Yes, you must use your ruler for this. And line that up with my guideline down here. Do that on both sides for my sidewalk. Okay. Now, if you wanted to turn one of these sidewalks into another thing, um, you could, but one of these has to do exactly what we're doing right now. Remember, this is just our practice one. Okay, then you're gonna make horizontal lines. So as you do this, each one of these lines is gonna get a little bit closer. And I'm actually gonna start way at the top here so that I can make sure that I've got some room. So the further away something is, or the closer it is to the vanishing point, the closer those are going to appear. They're gonna appear like they get smaller. So I have these lined here. I'm going to go ahead and do that on both sides by doing this. You ready? You ready? Into my ruler. Into my ruler. Into my ruler. Into my ruler. Lined up with the side like that. Okay. Very important. These lines must be horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and get both sides of that. Line up my ruler with the edge of the paper. Get both sides of that. Line it up with the edge of the paper. Line it up with my mark. So each time you have to line it up with the edge of the paper. You can go all the way across on that. That last one I kind of got off my mark. I might have to come back and fix that if it looks weird. Line it up with the edge of the paper. So the edge of the ruler, edge of the ruler, edge of the ruler, edge of the ruler. It's lined up with the edge of the paper. Okay, you can go ahead and make your sidewalks now with your horizontal lines. Make your sidewalks with your horizontal lines. Make sure that each time you line it up with the edge of the paper so that you are always getting a horizontal line. Diagonals will not work on this. I could probably squeeze in another, another one or two there. Yep. I think after that point you're not going to be able to see anything anyway. Now if you choose you could also do a little bit of a curve. A curb so I'm going to make, oh, this is about a quarter inch here. It's not very big. Put my pencil on my vanishing point, line it up with this mark I made. Then these lines also have to line up your ruler, the end of your ruler, with the edge of your paper. And these lines, if you choose to make a curb, those lines will be vertical. So the edge of my ruler is lined up with the edge of my paper on each one of these. And yes, every time we have to line up our ruler, with the edge of the paper to get your verticals. Let's get vertical, vertical. I want to get vertical. Actually, horizontal is better for me. I really do prefer to be lazy and laying down. I really do enjoy being lazy. I can get all kinds of stuff done when I'm horizontal, <laughs> but I prefer horizontal down is better for me. I can get down. I can sit down. I can lay down. Anybody know who I stole that joke from? Fluffy! Let's get vertical, vertical. So what you're looking at here, the edge of this would be the edge of the curb. And that must be what? Yes, vertical. Vertical, vertical. All right. So we've already created some depth in this. Okay. We're going to pause here and make sure everybody's good. Pause.
is and then we'll come back and that trunk is too big it's too wide too wide too wide I have like trees on steroids okay come to a stopping point and super focus on the screen one two three okay so now we're gonna make our buildings on the right hand side so I'm gonna use my ruler at the very very top and I'm gonna line it up the end with the edge of the paper you think I'm kidding? I'm so not kidding. Okay, line up the end of the ruler with the edge of the paper, and then you're gonna make a line to that guideline, this guideline here. Then you're gonna line it up with the edge of the paper again. And make a vertical line all the way down to your sidewalk. Here, you're gonna decide how big do you want that building? Do you want it narrow? I'm gonna make mine a little bit narrow, this one which is gonna be weird, because proportionally to the trees, it's, it's really, really narrow, but that's okay. I'm gonna be all right with that. I'm gonna line up my ruler. So one way I help myself go a little faster, make sure I'm not missing my mark, is I put my pencil on the spot here, then I line it up with the base, the bottom of the page, the edge of the paper, and voila. And then I need a horizontal line here, so I'm lining up with the edge of my ruler. So this would be the front of a building, and this would be the side of the building. So you can make as many buildings along there as you like. Remember, this is just our practice piece. When we get to our final piece, our final piece, make that a little bit more narrow. We're gonna get all kinds of weird. So in the final piece, if you wanted to make these buildings, they have to be in perspective basically they have to be blocks in perspective but if you wanted to make them into an aquarium instead of a building you could do that if you wanted to make them into horse stalls you could do that but you have to show the linear perspective in each one of these blocks so the left hand side can be more organic but the right hand side is going to be more geometric geometric do you have to use the ruler every time to line it up with Miss Little Finger? Do you? Yes, totally do. Yes, you do. Yes. Now, as you get better at drawing, your skills develop, you'll be able to make some vertical and horizontal lines pretty easily by eye eyeballing it. But for this assignment, I need for you to follow those directions. I'm going to make this building kind of long. Here. Line it up with the edge of my paper right there. Then one more line. And line, make sure you're lining that ruler up on the side closest to you so you can see it. All right, so I've got three buildings here. I've got my sidewalks. All the lines on the sidewalks are horizontal. My trees on the left, large to small. So this is the vertical placement. So closer to me, bigger. Further away from me, smaller. The bottoms of the trees, the further away they are, the higher in the composition they are. Same with this. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more things here and then we're gonna be done with our preliminary and we're gonna to try to get a little bit weird. So when you're making any sort of opening, a window, a door, those are going to be parallel with well, this side is actually going to be in linear perspective. So I'm gonna make a little guideline here and I'm very lightly going to draw in my guideline for the tops of my doors. Okay. These could be windows, whatever you like. Then all of the vertical lines are gonna be parallel with the, outs the left and right hand side of the paper and the verticals on your buildings. So this is a non-negotiable. The sidewalk, you can have one sidewalk. You don't have to have two sidewalks, but they have to have at least one that have the horizontal lines here. You need some sort of opening in your building. And the tops of the openings need to go to the vanishing point on this side of the building. And the sides of the openings need to be vertical and parallel with the outside edge of the paper and the outside edge of your building. And yes, you must use a ruler. 
Did I mention that you need to use a ruler? You gotta use a ruler, dude. All right, so there's our basic. So from there, we can get all kinds of strange. Ta-da!